Hey everyone, I'm Mike Henry, and this is my Procreate 4.3 demo for the piece I call Timeless. So we have a sketch group here in Barcelona called Sketch Bomb. It is another chapter in the sketch group that I started in San Francisco about 10 years ago. And at the last one, these were our three themes. Now while I started with a food attacks one, I ended up with an it's the 80s one. Uh, and it's this guy right here. So let's go into what makes this guy this guy and uh, see where we end up at the end. So Sketch Bomb is three hours long. Uh, in between the talking and my one of my kids comes to Sketch Bomb now um, and managing him and sort of all that, uh, it comes out to basically about two hours of actual drawing and painting time. So this was done in two hours. However, like some of the Sketch Bomb pieces that I've done in the past, it was two hours and then like a little bit of extra time. Um, so I will mark where we've hit the two hours and then we'll go into the extra time. So this guy, it was 80s, full on 80s. I actually didn't look up any reference for this one because I am painfully familiar with the fashion sense of the 80s. Uh, I focused on the hallmarks like the mullet and those terrible sort of like engineered glasses um, and then the like, you know, collar with the sweater with those crazy block colors on them and just trying to lean into uh, that color palette from the era. Now I could have done a lot of post-processing type things to make it a little more 80s -y, but I didn't want to go too far with it. And so uh, the only thing that I did to really shove that 80s the extra mile was putting those sort of laser beam background effects in the background. And I wanted to make sure that I was still really focusing on it looking kind of like messy and painterly. So I didn't make those lasers very lasery. They're still very painterly. So uh, we'll talk about that when we get there though. So we've got the rough sketch already done, uh, pretty straightforward. He's sort of just this like nerdy dude with this mullet. Um, and from there, it's just about banging in the flats. Now there are some aspects of this design that I wish I'd gotten just a little better. Um, I, I don't at all dislike the piece, but there's sort of like a, a little bit of almost like a no fear trapper keeper vibe to the character design. And I kind of wanted it just a little bit more like what I normally do. Um, but I think when I was trying to make sure I was capturing this kind of really nerdy guy, it was pushing me to sort of exaggerate features in a, in a certain way. And that's how it ended up that way. Um, also, there's that whole time pressure. At this point, when I started the illustration, I had already gotten through the entire sketch phase and even some of the color blocking on my food attacks illustration. And then I was like, oh shit, I've wasted a lot of time. And then I had to like sort of back up and, you know, start a brand new thing uh, so I was really just rushing I wanted to make sure that I was getting the piece to a certain state uh, so that I could then like adjust for time and be like okay now I've got more time to work on it so I definitely rush things like the hair just trying to find a solution that will get me the look that I want uh, but get it done quickly. So for instance, the top of his hair, if I was sitting down and I was really planning out the sketch, I would have styled the top a little bit more, maybe found a more interesting way to make the hair look stylized in a way that I wanted it. Uh, but I was also trying to really make sure I was capturing that kind of like over gelled hair where like someone has put lots of gel in their hair, but they didn't do like a great job. So some of it is really holding like hard and stiff and other parts are like really fuzzy. And I, I could have driven that home much better if I had taken my time, but I was really trying to just make sure that there was some amount of like depth to the hair and that it looked remotely like the look I was, I was going for. Um, so that hair is comprised of three layers is basically where I'm going with this. It's like a messy middle layer that's that sort of just generic brown yellow. And then there's like a darker brown behind it to give it a little bit of volume and depth and then these like lighter strands in the foreground. Uh, really the hair is the only challenging aspect of this piece. Everything else is a, pr a pretty known quantity. Um, so we're onto the sweatshirt. And this is, this is just really simple. This is just about colors and getting those bandings right, just making sure the styling uh, matches the era.
here's his sort of little thin, gross mustache. Uh, at one point, I was going to make it a little more stubbly, but I think the thing that's kind of funny about that mustache is it is kind of like long strands. It's like sparse, longer strands. So I wanted to go with these bigger, thicker, longer strands, and then I'd be able to actually cast light off of them. I thought that would just be kind of a fun little touch, so that's what I went for there. Uh, and then here we've got the eyelash detail. We're just going to clean up these flats a little bit. At this point, I've got him flatted, so I'm just sort of reevaluating uh, what I have left to do. So I'm coming down here and cleaning up these flats. I then uh, start the ambient occlusion pass. Uh, and in the middle of all of this, you're going to see me remember, like, all oh, right, he's got glasses, and I quickly throw the glasses on. So right now, it's just about going in and covering some of those gaps that are a little too egregious and smoothing out certain aspects. I wanted his neck to be kind of like weird like it is, um, but I do actually smooth it out a little bit more because it was just a little too turkey necky. There's also like almost like a bit of a, I don't know, like King of the Hill or like Beavis and Butthead vibe to this character design, which that I'm totally down for. So uh, it, it captures how this guy's life is going basically. So now we're doing the ambient occlusion pass. Since his skin is pretty bright, uh, you can see sort of what that shadow color looks like there. Uh, it's like a light, a light desaturated red, which is something I frequently use. In fact, I probably just used the palette that I had laying around for this because I was in a hurry and playing catch up, helping my son uh, with you know understanding the themes and talking to people and and then myself talking to people and then just trying to bang this out. I will admit I probably was a little bit more silent than normal because I was I was kind of up against it and I wanted to make sure I got it done. So now we throw his chain on. That was in the sketch and uh, I just needed to get the flat in real quick. And see now I start doing the ambient pass on his face uh, and at some point here I'm going to realize that he needs his glasses and you'll see me quickly do the glasses, which I can explain now for when it happens. I drew half of it and then duplicated and flipped it and then warped it all into the perspective I needed. I could have done like the symmetry tool really quick just to do that, but um, I just sort of went with a more classic Photoshop method of just, yeah, I'll just draw half of it, flip it, and then and then go from there. And there are times where the you really want to use the symmetry tool because you're going to be doing something elaborate and you want that symmetry to be represented the whole time you want to see it. But for something that's really quick like this one was, I just wanted to get the glass frame down, like the glasses frame like really fast and there wasn't much need for that to be like an elaborate setup of the symmetry tool. So here we are continuing the ambient occlusion pass, which is the sort of soft shadows that are helping define some of the surface. Uh, I sort of do uh, a pseudo ambient occlusion, pseudo, uh, I guess like form shadow pass. So if you're looking at some of what I'm doing here and you're going, well, that's not true ambient occlusion, like that's why, because it's kind of like a hybrid. Right there, you just saw that was me doing the glasses and then warping them into the perspective I wanted and now on a new layer I'm actually painting it because I did it really fast and, and rough on purpose so that I could get it as a guide and now I'm just painting it like into the perspective that I needed. It also helps because the sort of the main front of those frames um, can be in perspective but then things like those little bits that come down to the nose rest like that has to be done actually in perspective of the drawing so just use the frame real quick and then you can go in and do the sort of like ear stems and the whatever these pieces are called somebody out there if you're a if you're a glasses expert you can correct my glasses anatomy so now that that got thrown on we could use that to finish up the ambient occlusion pass on the face and then eventually we'll use that as a selection to clear the ambient occlusion and then start uh, doing the ambient occlusion on the glasses themselves. So right now we're moving into the hair. Again, this is very messy uh, and it's sort of messy 
dictated by the, the time and a little bit my patience because I can't honestly say that if I had plenty of time I would have done a, a much better job of this. Uh, I probably would have done a better job but in the moment I was just like yeah okay let's just make sure that there's some volume and some depth to it and, uh, and go from there. So we've got the back hair which I didn't really do much with. I did on the bottom part of his mullet but the mid the mid range and then the, the, the closest layers, the ones that kind of represent the highlight hairs, uh, that was where most of the work uh, was for the hair there. And so I wanted his glasses to have, like, I wanted them to be glasses glasses, not sunglasses, but I wanted them to still have, like, that kind of, like, aged tinting on them, which is what you see there. So they're glasses, they're not sunglasses, but he they're either old or he was convinced that that would be a good idea to have them like slightly darkened, and so that's what he's got going on there. Also things like what you just saw where I had that, that big hard reflection put in there and then I duplicated it and blurred it, that's because at this point I'm trying to get the piece to something that's showable as fast as possible. So when I'm in the middle of doing some of these things, I'm like, okay, well, I wanna see what this is going to look like at the end. So I'm just gonna quickly do that part, see how it looks. Okay, looks fine, move on. And that'll, I'll, I'll readdress it later. So now that we're done with the ambient occlusion pass, we're moving into the direct shadows pass. Uh, and this is, this is going to represent mostly cast shadows, but there'll also be opportunities to represent some of the actual form turning on the figure. The layers set up for this piece, for those of you who haven't seen a video of mine before, I have all of these flats on different layers so that I can select them. If you want to know how to select a, the contents of a layer, you tap on the layer and you get that like big expand menu and select is on there. And that'll help you select the contents of a layer. And then on a new layer, I do the shadow, which is a single shadow layer for each one of these passes. Uh, if you'd like to know more about that method, uh, it's linked down below. I usually refer to it as select paint, select clear, and you can see that there. So all of these layers are organized in a way that most of the time makes some sense to me. Um, this one I think might have had a couple of like, oh, why did I do that? But I think for the most part this one is pretty straightforward. So if something seems logically, which by the way you can see it pretty clearly if you go back through the flats process, but um, I think if something appears like it should be behind or in front of it, it most likely is. You can also see how messy that shadow is up by the hair. That's because that will eventually get selected and cleared to some degree. Uh, so you'll see that uh, clean up a bit. I just realized that I've, I've recently done a lot of characters with glasses and I actually just today painted a character that had like gold framed glasses like this. So I watching this on the same day that I painted that is like, damn, I need to stop doing gold frame glasses. So now we're just doing the shadows on that mustache. Now we've moved on to the teeth. And you can see there with the eye shine that I just had, um, I had to figure out what layers to put it on because since we've got that gradient on the glasses, I can't put the eye shines on the topmost layer like I normally do since they're behind that. So instead I get the eye shines under that layer now and then the ones that are going to be like the most brilliant white on top of everything will be the reflections in the glasses. Okay, now we're cleaning up the highlights layer of the hair and not highlights like lighting highlights like the like almost like he did highlight his hair kind of hair now we're putting in all the shadow details on the glasses frames and now we've ha we have like almost the entirety of our form so i feel comfortable going in and adding some local color variation so we've got the blush under the nose and the ears, which is pretty usual, especially for a pasty guy like this. 
Um, and then we've got some purple around the eyes, which we'll set to multiply and dramatically lower the opacity just to create a little bit of that effect there. Now we're moving into our highlight. The highlight for this one is Actually, I can't tell you what it is as far as the layer setting. I think I went through a few things throughout it because there was there were aspects of it that just wasn't really working out for me. So it starts, I believe, as a normal layer with its opacity lowered, and then I eventually change it to an overlay, and I'm pretty sure it remains an overlay, which means that you're going to get a little bit less of the color from it, but you you'll have it be affected by its undercolor a little more and I was having some colors that were really fighting with it so that's what made me decide to do that. Now the remainder of this piece is going to go a little hectic so I want to sort of set the stage for that. In a second I'm going to slow it way down because you're going to see me turn a bunch of layers off and I'm going to do like a little bit of a gradient darkness coming on the distant side of his face towards us uh, which is right there and then I erase away a little bit to reveal some of those facial features. Uh, and I'm just making some little reflection tweaks, trying to get sort of the bounce, the reflection of his nose onto the lens of his glasses, that type of thing. Getting a little bit of a purple gradient coming up his body. And now we get into the lasers. The lasers are just, I just went with my memory, some turquoise lasers, some magenta lasers uh, in different directions, and then duplicate those layers and blur them. And then I added like a little bit of a gradient purple coming up from the bottom. Now we're gonna darken big aspects of him and uh, to try and focus some of the uh, focus the focal point of the piece a little bit I know it's just his head but trying to get it even tighter and a little bit more direct um, we've got a little bit of paint like sort of texture happening in the background that was just done with like a lighter purple on that background now we're adding in the rim light you can see me going in and just sort of you know needling that in there a little bit uh, and we're actually getting close to where this is going to wrap up the the first part of this is going to wrap up trying to get a rim light on there that that will sort of build out his form a little bit more it might even sort of hint at you know I mean, to be honest, it's not like the normal sort of like Sears photo that you would have gotten in the 80s, but theoretically, if you're in like a photo shoot, that's where you would get a setup rim light like that, so it just makes a lot of sense. Um, so it's a little bit of like indulgence from an art perspective as well as I could maybe make an excuse for it. Now we're going through and doing all the hair shines, trying to really make sure that that hair looks nice and glossy. And then putting uh, some more shines across his glasses. And now we've got the sort of shadow, uh, the rich shadow transition color put in. And now I just did that trick that you've seen in past videos where I duplicate and blur and then mask it. Go ahead and look at my old goth chick that I did a while back with like the black leather on. I, it's there in full effect. And I did it here as well, although I don't think it was as successful. This here is the version of the illustration that was like sort of done at Sketchbomb. Given the time constraints and the environment and all of that kind of stuff, uh, I'm happy with the way it turned out. However, I wanted to take it a little bit further because I liked it enough, but it needed more. So here you see me turning off a bunch of layers. This is sort of the phase where I'm evaluating what needs to change here. And so now I strip it all the way back down to basically it's flats and start doing a cleanup pass. Now the cleanup is so small that I can't really figure out exactly what's being cleaned up when I review this um, so maybe you can because you're staring at a higher res version of it than I am in my little preview window but just know that the idea here is to go through and just say hey could this be a little cleaner could I fill that in a little bit more solidly uh, it's not really trying to make it look smooth and super polished as if I had used a more computer generated kind of brush it was more just about saying there's some natural messiness here, but what's the amount of messiness that I don't really want and I want cleaned up? So that's what's happening here in all the little bits. And that's why you see right here, for instance, on the chin jaw, that's why I turned off his neck because his neck layer being under his jaw layer was sort of hiding what was like see-through and what wasn't basically. 
So now we've gone through and we've mostly cleaned everything up. There's probably going to be a little bit more of that here, which is why this part of the video is also long because it's like lots of little individual strokes. So Procreate is, of course, recording each one of those as like a beat. So there's a lot of like little tapping and little smudging and little whatever to try and make sure that everything is tightened up. Now, of course, this is going to have some impact in spots on the various shadow passes. So we're going to be now going through each one of those and just saying not only did this get impacted, but is there something that I want to change on this layer uh, that to just make it better to take it up to the same level of quality that I just did on the flats pass. So little things like how the little eye uh, excuse me, the nose rest, the bridge of the nose rest for the glasses I just put in, I had completely forgotten to do it in the moment. And so after evaluating it later, it was like, oh shit, that's kind of a big thing. So now there's just this metal piece like sticking out for no reason. Uh, also cleaning up the hair, just trying to find little, little wins basically across the entire thing. Now I've turned on the direct light layer and I'm going through and seeing what aspects of this could be improved as well. I think you can see as all these changes sort of dart around the page that they are improvements. They might be small, each individual one might be small, but I think it adds up to a level of confidence that the piece has when you look at it that something doesn't look as just kind of doodled in real quick. It looks a little bit more deliberate and I think that that is ultimately important. Since I've adjusted some of those shadows, I'm adjusting the other sort of complementary layers like the uh, the saturated highlight on the shadow. Uh, I did things right there like adding a little bit of pinkness to his lips. We've now brought that shadow back in and I'm remodeling, sorry, the, the gradient shadow, and now I'm remodeling the structure of his nose a little bit to be just better. Uh, and then when I flipped on the highlight layer, it's like, okay, now that has to change as well. So essentially what I'm doing now is a whole new pass where I've got this sort of structure and I'm going through every layer and saying can this be improved and it might just be a little thing here or there but it, it could mean a big change in the in the final thing but each layer will then just like it does when you're creating the piece will impact each next layer uh, as you're reevaluating them and you see these layers flicking on and off a lot because I'm maybe having to go back and just quickly adjust something or I just want to see if that change is, is meaningful. All those little toggles that you're seeing is me doing that, I'm checking it. I'm also sometimes just saying like, what is this layer? Sometimes I'll be toggling it on and off and there'll be something that's on that layer that's obviously changing and then there'll be parts that aren't and I'm like, oh shit, I gotta find what that is. Right there is me doing a toggle check with the original version. I just literally brought it back in, made it a layer on top and toggled it on and off to see if my changes were good. And now here I'm improving that reflection. It's basically like a window reflection, which is kind of weird. You, you probably wouldn't get that in a photo booth, but I don't care. And so I've got more of like that sunlight coming through the window and then that whole thing reflecting on his glasses. And this is going to be coming in for a landing now. We are seconds away from it being completed and it is done. So that's the finished piece. This is the 80s guy from my last Sketch Bomb here in Barcelona. Uh, super fun. I love going to Sketch Bomb actually and doing these full color pieces. I think the old the old stuff I used to do at Sketch Bombs are also, of course, really fun to do, and I, I like them both for different reasons. Uh, but it's been cool to sort of bang out like almost like a full piece every time. 
it's just a cool challenge. So let's switch back. This is the old version. This is the version that I had at the end of the night. And then the version with like an extra 30 minutes spent on it right there. So I hope you enjoyed this demo. Please leave a comment down below and let me know if you're enjoying how this is going, anything else you'd like to see, etc., etc. Also, please like and please hit subscribe. All of these things actually matter, even though it may not seem like it when you're just browsing YouTube on the toilet, but it does. Thank you so much for watching. Also, as a reminder, next week is Trojan Horse Was a Unicorn, a.k.a. THU. So if you're going, shoot me a message, let me know. It'd be awesome to meet. Maybe come by for a portfolio review or something, and I'll see you there. And if you're looking for me on the internet, these are the places where you can find me.